All right, folks, um, we are back again uh, with Achila Ji, and we'll be doing Puru Falguni Nakshatra, the Vita Mantras and meditation for Puru Falguni Nakshatra. So, welcome, Achila Ji. Namaste. So, please take us through this uh, Puru Falguni Nakshatra. Okay, let me share my screen. So, here we are going to another, the fourth nakshatra, which is also connected to the heart chakra, Purva Falguni, and it's connected just one beach mantra on one petal of heart chakra, which is Cham. So let us chant first the mantra. It's Om Cham Purva Falguni Nakshatrai Namaha. Om Cham Purva Palguni Nakshatrai Namaha. Om Cham Purva Palguni Nakshatrai Namaha. So here I collected some verbs, Sanskrit verbs that are connected to Purva Falguni, and I believe they have actually quite a lot to do with the nature of Purva Falguni itself. Chakas to shine, Chaksh to see, Chanj to dance. Chan to be pleased, Chat to hide, Cham, the beach mantra itself is to sit, actually, and Char to move. And if you see at all these uh, little verbs here, actually they have a lot to do with Purva Falguni itself. When we'll see at the end uh, also the Padas and all the chakra energies that are somehow the most connected to Purva Falguni Nakshatra, we'll see that basically speaking the heart chakra is very strong here actually because it's venus nakshatra right so it has to be somehow connected and also it's actually the birth nakshatra of brihaspati and brihaspati also has this little bit of these uh, qualities of purva palguni which is uh, very much optimistic expansive about procreation also and so on but Purva Falguni on its own, I think it uh, more reveals this desire part actually of our heart. So it's not only about this love, but it's also about the all desires that we have. And that's why I believe that also this uh, main beach mantra here, which is, which is Cham, is connected to the verb to sit something. And we will see very, very soon when I will just, I don't know if it's on the other slide, yeah, on the other slide, so this is actually the painting, Bengali painting, again, of Purva Falguni Nakshatra. And she's actually holding a cup here. So it's very interesting. And of course, she's all in red. So she's this woman in red that you're talking about. She has four hands also, which also denotes her really strong power. But also it stands for desires, all kinds of desires that we have in life. And if we look, uh, for example, at mythological persons that were born under this nakshatra, we will see that one of them was Duryodhan, actually, from Mahabharata. So he had like this uh, lot of, lot of desires that he wanted to fulfill all the time. So, and sometimes he was really very childish in those desires even, because those desires ultimately actually led him to more or less his destruction, really. So it also shows what can actually happen if we don't keep it under control. And I think that this is the most beautifully shown uh, in the form which Aryaman has. So Aryaman is the deity here. And of course, apart from being uh, the god of contract, the god of coming together, and uh, the god of opposites coming together as well. Also, it's very interesting to know that each of these uh, Adityas, uh, basically speaking, all of them have lotus flowers in hands, but they usually have something else also which distincts them from the other. And this uh, object that is, let's say, distincting in Aryaman is actually Gada. And it's actually very interesting if we think that this was actually the main weapon of Duryodhan also. So he was obviously very much connected with Aryaman. But Gada also, its esoteric meaning is actually destroying the ego, the Ahamkara. So like, like let's say we, if we would analyze all the four objects that are in the hands of Vishnu, which is Sudarshan, which is Shanka, which is lotus flower, and we have also Gada, the maze, which represents literally uh, destroying of our ego. And I think it's, uh, let's say, the main issue somehow connected with Purva Falguni Nakshatra 
So destroying our own ego a little bit, becoming a little bit more humble and perhaps not desiring too much. Because uh, which nakshatra will find right opposite? It will be Shatabisha, right? And uh, Shatabisha is Rakus nakshatra, right? It's very much connected with Rakus energy. This Raku that is uh, saying, oh, it's not fair, you know, I didn't get my drop of Amrit. Where is my drop of Amrit, right? Why I'm not getting this? So it's this feeling of not, that something is happening not fair. And the deity of Shatabisha on the other side is Varuna on the other hand. So he's the god of cosmic order, cosmic balance. So we could say, basically speaking, that uh, if Purva Falguni is not balanced by respecting Varuna, by understanding that everything happens for a purpose, even if we don't get something in life, if we are less fortunate in certain things, we can't just go and say that God is unfair because we have no idea what kind of karmas we bring from previous lifetimes. And this is where Purva Falguni Nakshatra sometimes may fail. We fail to understand that uh, not all of its desires might, must be fulfilled. Not all of them must be fulfilled in this lifetime because maybe they will be fulfilled a little bit later, but maybe just not at the moment because it's just not our destiny right now and it's not the most important for us right now. So I believe that this is, these are like, let's say, the most important qualities of uh, Purva Falguni Nakshatra, very strongly connected to heart chakra, which again, it's not only the source of our love, but it's also the source of our desires really within us. And here if we see, basically speaking, the most prominent energies in Purva Falguni, of course, this is going to Ajna chakra, which is the sign of Leo and the first Pada here, but the most powerful here is again heart chakra. So that's why I sometimes like to say that Purva Falguni is like almost the heart of heart chakra, literally, for me. This is how I connect it. Um, Achilaji, this is a beautiful thing that you brought up about the Anahata and how this is connected to Purva Falguni Nakshatra. And some of the things that when you're talking about came to my mind is this Nakshatra is supposed to be uh, one of the most advanced nakshatra in terms of uh, relationships, you know, people who, so if you have prominent planets which fall in Puru Kalpuni, it can give you great relationships. And that's again, trying to re reiterate your point, you're saying it's Anahata Chakra, it's all about the heart. At the same time, what I wanted to say is, um, uh, although you mentioned about uh, Aryama being the, the deity, the presiding archetype of Puru Kalpuni, there, are, there has been a certain text, you know, in olden times that there has been a switch over which has happened between the deities. You know, many texts talk about, you know, the olden version of the text that you talk about, the Vajrayatiriya Samhita and all of them, they talk about Aryama being the, the archetype associated with Puru Falguni. But somewhere down the line, there has been a switch over. They say Bhaga became the, the archetype. Both are Vedic solar deities and uh, Bhaga, uh, because one of the desires of Kuru Falguni is to have the best share among the gods. So Bhaga means the share. And um, although both are correct, I'm not trying to say that, you know, because Aryama is the lot of contracts and unions and, uh, you know, friendship. And then you see Bhaga is more about inheritance and uh, the wealth. Or he's also called as, uh, Bhaga was also called as the Vibhakta. Vibhakta means the distributor. So what he used to do is basically what I feel is Vibhakta and Bhaga might also be having some connection with Agni. Although there is no mention about that in any of the Shastras, but he is a sort of a distributor. Like Agni is a distributor of food, which is which is given to him because he is called Saptajiva. He has seven heads with seven tongues and he takes the the sacrifice which is offered to him and then he distributes it in the heaven okay so he's only a medium to take the food to the gods now um it's beautifully mentioned that you want this thing called the keyword called chaksh chaksh means ice and in mythological stories bhaga was supposed to have his eyes punched out or eyes scooped out by Virabhadra. Virabhadra. Wow, i didn't know that Yes, the mythological stories uh, tell about Dakshas. When Dakshas Yagna was being, um, you know, destroyed by Virabhadra and Mahakali, 
because these were, you know, because Sati actually self-immolated by jumping into the fire, the fire pit of her own, the yagna, which was done by her own father, Daksha. So it's uh, in Sanskrit, it's called Daksha Yagna Bhada. Bhada means obstacle in Daksha's yagna. Daksha Yagna Bhada. Daksha Yagna Bhada episode, Girabhadra comes uh, stomping and he starts destroying the yagna. And because it is believed that the uh, Bhaga was looking at the looking at the thing with his eyes popped out, the sacrifice which was given to him, because he is always desiring to have the best share, the lion's share. And that's why you see Kuru Palguni falls very much into the, the middle of Leo. And the word, the English terminology is saying that I want a lion's share. Mm. So that fits very well with this nakshatra. So they want the bigger share. And so what does Virabhadra... Is... Sorry? Yes, you're saying something? This is really, really interesting. Yeah. So his eyes yes, were... It's, it's his, good now. Yeah. His eyes were popped out. And that's why you see chakshus means eyes. And that's some connection to that as well. Um, another thing, theme that I saw beautifully is, uh, you see the lady, the reddish lady, she had four arms and all her arms were uh, colored in red, yeah. right? Now, during the marriages, it is in, in India, it's a ritual that you, uh, you have mehendi, you know? The decorative mm -hmm. artwork that you have on the hand, which makes your palm very red. That's again Puro Falguni. That's your preparation for marriage. So Shiva and Parvati were supposed to, I mean the, the Bharat or the ceremony for Shiva to get to the place to get married to Parvati actually started on Puro Falguni Nakshatra. And the marriage woes were exchanged as soon as moon transited into Kuru Palguni. So, oh, sorry, wow. Uttara Palguni, Uttara Palguni. So it was Gargarishi apparently was sitting with the ephemeris to see when was moon going to transit into Uttara Palguni, from Kuru Palguni. And when he moved in, he said, okay, now it's the time for you to exchange the, the woes. So Uttara Palguni is supposed to be very good for marriage contracts and unions. And Kuru Palguni, wow. yeah, Kuru, Kuru Palguni is all about the preparation for marriage or you can say it is the courtship which goes before the marriage, huh. right? So these are very, very important themes that I've uh, seen. And, you know, whenever I see this, it, and one more thing, what came to my mind was when I've seen this uh, image of this lady, you see that she's got a cup in her hand, right? Mm. Now, Guru Falguni is supposed to be one of the most social nakshatras amongst all the zodiac. They're very social beings. They are called, this is called as a party nakshatra. It's all about, you know, merrymaking. Mm -hmm. So it's a lady who's holding a cup of an, in, I mean, like an intoxicant in her hand. So mm -hmm. maybe that is a, another thing about enjoyment of life. So Kuru mm -hmm. Falguni is, yes, yeah. okay. So you will find a lot of Kuru Falguni people who are very actively involved with networking, friendship, social groups, uh, you know, even they could be excellent wedding wedding planners. You know, Kuru Falguni and Uttar Falguni could be excellent wedding planners or matchmakers. Mm. You would find uh, Aryama was supposed to be uh, the the best man, or you can say if it's a woman's chart, it's the best. Uh, I mean, the bridesmaid for a wedding. Mm. So they represent being the Aryama. Aryama is a friend who seeks the. So seeks a girl in marriage for his friend. So beautiful thing, uh, Achala Ji, there's so much we can talk about, but I, I I love the images that you're bringing from, you know, and this is absolutely stunning and fascinating. I'm learning so much. So thank you very much for coming and taking time and teaching us these beautiful things. And every day is a learning for me, Achala Ji. When I interact with so many people uh, on Nakshatras, every time I interact with people, I learn something new. So I'm with. So, even I am so inspired now because now it uh, also makes me think that uh, even if we look at uh, again like Priya Brahmana, we will see there actually that uh, there are like very few Nakshatras at all who are, let's say, allowed for us to make Yagna from the Nakshatra. And that would be the Kritika, Rohini, uh, Uttara Falguni, Purva Falguni, and Chitra. And that's all, basically speaking. And Vishaka. And, and, and Vishaka. Like, yeah. Because Indragni. 
Yeah. And, and so. it's very special somehow because even I think in Shakapata Brahmana, it's written that uh, Uttara Falguni is like uh, the mouth of the year and Purva Falguni is like the tail of the year. So it's really amazing how many of these connections are coming and how everything is connected really in some way. It's very, very beautiful Vaiji. So this is fascinating, Acharya. We should bring out more of these things from, uh, you know, the Taitiriya Summit or the Taitiriya Brahmana or uh, Aranyakas. What do, what do we call them? More Upanishads. These are beautiful things that are hidden there, and these images that you're also bringing us, and these mythological stories what you're bringing us is also very stunning. We get to learn a lot from these. So thank you very much again uh, for joining us today. Um, and next, you know, we'll do, do we'll be doing Uttara Parvati Nakshatra. So. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you very much. Bye. Namaste. Bye -bye.